So, what I will, I will talk about is the complexity and action. That is actually, as we will see, very linked to what we want to do, our mission as business system laboratory. Reflection on decision making and cybernetics. How can cybernetics help be a tool uh, to better comprehend all the ways for decision making? Okay, this doesn't work anymore. Okay, in the beginning was the deal. So this is how go get a Rebrides the beginning of the Gospel of St. John, valuing the deed over inactivity. Not the word, nor the thought, nor the energy. Human action creates the world. And then the aim is not to the goal, but to the path. It's not that we have to have the cause effect always. It's the path, it's the road we. We are doing the road that we learn. It's not that we can learn something before having going to the road. So, Kierkegaard, life is not a problem to be solved, but a reality to be experienced. So we must learn to experience. And what can we say about complexity? Because one of the things I often listening to some colleagues or others when they talk about complexities. Oh, the world is too complex. Oh, we cannot understand what to do. Then what? So then we must do something. We must act, otherwise we say, okay, think I cannot decide how things go, so whatever, whatever happens, I'm here, I, we become passive. So this is what we don't, we shouldn't do, I think. So the problem with the complexity is that it, it is, well, complex. It is difficult to conceptualize, much less oper operationalize, as an emergent phenomena. Thus, an intuitive and even obvious as the idea of emergence may be, it has not advanced much beyond the rhetoric, metaphor, or disclaimer. If anything, the, the effect has been to trivialize emergence as either too obvious or tried to be theoretically useful or too complicated to be particularly useful. This is actually uh, Mihata that, that tell that, but I, I, I can subscribe this because it's what sometimes happens when hearing talking about the complexity. So, to think or to act. This is the problem because, of course, if we just act, okay, we can fall down with not just acting, okay? So we need both. We need thought and action. And then to think or to act in a complex world, the alternatives of action are not given, but must be sought out. So what are the problems? Are limited rationality, uncertainty, and then the trembling hand deriving from this because of course, as we can see, as we know, it's easier sometimes to have some, some solution. That's why it's so difficult to overcome the limitation of the old models that give a magic spell. So, knowledge is power. Yes, it's true. And then, but better to say knowledge is power in reserve. Because knowledge alone doesn't do anything. It's just knowledge. And then what? Again. So, Mahatma Gandhi was saying, our thoughts, however good they may be, are fake first until they are transformed into action. Be the, be the change you want to see in the world. We need some, of oh, Edgar Morin, uh, we need this, uh, some archipelagos of certainty to navigate on this sea of uncertainty. So, it, if it's not possible to forecast, because the world is complex, and then where we find these certainties? Where, where, how can we be certain of something if, by definition, we are in a complex world which doesn't have any certainty? So the temptation is like to be trembly and then to say, OK, I, it's so good to have the old-fashioned models that you put the data in and they give you the solution to your problem. And with that Black and Scholes formula, you become rich. 
-hmm. Yeah, this is a temptation. This is marketing, actually. I am giving to people what they want to hear. They want to hear, I have a solution to make money. They want to hear, I have a magic formula to get out of the crisis. So I'm not a magician, even my name is Gandalf, similar to Gandalf. So I can't give this spell. So and, and I think nobody can actually, because it's, it's the world is complex. There is not such a magic spell. And who says he has a magic spell that just wants to steal your money or want to get power telling for that? So the temptation is this from the, the temptation of the reductionist models. And uh, so the, uh, then the reason why they are so strong in the managerial mispractice is that they are comfortable because it's what everybody wants. So Otto Schammer says <laughs> we should act on the best information we have and to not wait for the non-existence perfect level of information. This is something I was discussing with my colleague over there in Toscanella for a long time. That, okay, we cannot never we can never know everything. Okay, so we cannot wait to be sure something will be okay like that. And we should we should try. So we we must be brave in some way. Of course this doesn't mean we don't have to think because it's true that knowledge is power in reserve. So first I need to have the reserve, then I have to try that reserve, otherwise it's useless. And this is actually what we have been doing with business system laboratory. Because we had an idea, and then we met with Jean Paolo, our president, and then, okay, we can do coaching, and we can do uh, and academia, and then maybe one day we will do consulting. We are just one year old. That's all. It's too early for this. But the idea was, okay, we have the academia, and then we have the businesses. So then they cannot talk well together. So let's try to be a bridge. And then let's try this. And, let's try, and then we try things. And then we, we, we are going to see what works, what doesn't work, how it can work. And time by time, we are developing just from nothing, from our ideas and network. So the problem, again, about complexity is that, of course, that uh, thinking without acting is a mistake, but the cybernetics talks a lot of feedback, but there is also the feed forward. And the feed forward, uh, I think that the feedback alone is nothing without feed forward. Feed forward with feedback are the way of learning. So learning by doing, learning by mistake, to a continuous loop. As Raoul was saying, the loop must be continuous. There is not a, a beginning or a end because we never stop learning. Whoever says that he's, he knows everything, he knows nothing. So actual learning develops the ability to create the change and not be afraid to do so. It enables members to see and understand the concomitant change that is happening inside themselves so they can, that they can do it again with even greater facility. So Checkland, for example, this is not just me to say, of course, this is been told and applied by many uh, researchers, check on uh, soft system methodologies, learning system aim, aimed to action to improve. Or Lewin, that is the founder, as many of you maybe know, of the action research field. Action research is a research in which the researcher enters a problem situation, takes part in the effort to improve things, and makes that, that experience the focus of his her own research. So, also in the academia, it's not that research is something we do in a lab because of there, in business, it's not like that. What, uh, what, on what can we experiment what we do? On firms. That's where. I know we cannot just make a model or economy, a model of firm, especially in business study, where we have a, like a business there. No, we need to go to the business and try. Of course, we, this is difficult because we don't have the magic spell to sell. So we have to sell them what? Questions, not more than answers. So this is the problem. So applying ideas of system thinking with action is consistent with the notion of attention to environment, which is fundamental to complexity. Complexity rejects the idea that one generalizable solution can fit multiple situations. 
because every situation is different, otherwise it's not complex. I mean, if I, I will never have the two people that are exactly the same. I, I can never know, like in Power of Dog, that behavior because, because I switch on the light to a man. I mean, this doesn't work. This was applied at the early stage of marketing, and now we have seen that it doesn't work at all. And system theory becomes a learning tool. So to, for trying out sol solution to, uh, to local and special specific problems by thinking to implement a prototype and of action as a fit forward tool to read the feedbacks coming, coming from it. And so this is what, the, for example, the International Federation of System Research is doing. No, I will not go deep in this. If you want to go, go to the EFSR web page, you can find the explanation of all this. Integrative system science, then the system thinking, and then system approaches to practice. So this is what they are, are doing. I mean, and this is, as I told you before, I mean, this is, there are a lot of researches about how to do this. So cybernetics can be a way to bridge thinking, knowledge, and action. Cybernetics to suggest a two powerful tools to overcome this kind of fear and inhibition that are feedback and feed forward. And feedback is learning. Uh, feedback can be used as a way of learning by doing a better learning by mistake. And then, before but before making mistake to learn, we need to think. Simplify complexity in mental schemes. Is the black box of which Raoul Esther was talking before. Okay, we don't, our brain has not an infinite capability, unfortunately. We cannot know everything at the same time. It's impossible. We need to put a black box at, at a certain level. That is also what Alain Berthos called simplexity. I mean, that is, I could not move my hand if I don't have a mental scheme that makes me move my hand. Maybe I'm moving in the wrong direction and I act something and then I land. I don't have to put my hand there. So, of course, we know we need some information, but we cannot have all the information. So, to do so, we need the prototypes. And then, of course, we need the feed forward. That is, the, the, the definition is the possibility by a system, or kyber, system kybernetics, that is what in the uh, viable system approach of Golinelli we call the organ of governments, or, or uh, organ di governo in Italiano, or uh, in the living system approach Miller uh, calls the, the cyber. The, the definition is very similar. Maybe somebody of you is more comfortable with the living system uh, theory. So, to grasp in advance and be able to modify the deviation that a certain input could cause to a possible desire of the final state. So resilience is the ability of the whole system to get back to the prison that I, so, uh, to desire the state. So wait, one, one thing that they say, ah, you act too fast. You can, go to, you can fall on a banana slip. That's what they always say. OK, if I fall on a banana slip, I, I stand up again. I mean, it's not that we have to be so scared not to run and moving very slowly because I could fall down. Okay, we have to pay attention to the banana slip, but we don't need to be scared of the banana slip because we can have a certain level of resilience. So the ability of the whole system to get back to the previous or decided state after an unforecasted perturbation like a banana slip. So what do we need then? What is it? We need a model that makes us become scuba divers, a new paradigm that <coughs> helps us to become scuba divers, to go inside the sea to see what happens there, to really check what we do. So data makes this, uh, tells this the world is a complex place where even an appearing simple question has a subtle overtones. And we find out, too, that in some ways the world is a simpler place than the basing of unique experiences. The decision to get made, neither the quantitative hook set for the big fish, nor the qualitative net scaled for the little fish adequately captures life in most seas. So we don't know which is the best approach to know. So we must go there and to capture the fish. This is the metaphor. So what 
what we uh, what I propose, okay, the prototype or the bathometer. No, what is a bathometer? It's something where you go sailing, you put down, and to see what what's down in the sea. And then in, according to that, you avoid to do like the famous uh, Italian uh, Stettino with the Costa Chiochere. No, if he, had, he was using the bathometer, he was not <laughs> going there. He didn't use he had some girlfriend who was busy. So <laughs> then, what does a bathometer experiment? A bathometer experiments the depth of the sea and what is not visible to the eye. So maybe I, because I cannot know, I don't have some magic stuff. Oh, well, now we can argue with, with the, an electronic bathometer, but let's suppose that doesn't exist. I cannot know, have a model that tells me what, what's down in the sea where I cannot see in the sea of complexity. Measures the depth of the sea. I know how, how, how much is the depth of the sea in that point. Takes the risk, because the poor bathometer could die there. We don't know. But gives feedback, and then supplies input for feed forward. Because from that feedback, I can think how to change my direction. OK, here, no. So how can I get to where I want to go? So maybe that way, maybe that other way. I need to think and, and try to have the feed forward for that. So how must a bathometer prototype be clear? must be clear in the aim and go straight. I mean, when I throw a prototype, I must know what I want that prototype to do. Otherwise, I, I don't test anything. So I, 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 I want to know how much is the depth there. I will throw there, not in another place. So easy to read. I must, it must be easy to understand what's, what's the feedback. Otherwise, if I get the feedback that uh, is not clear, it's useless. And uh, resistant must be able to resist whatever it finds, otherwise I will lose the bathometer very easy. And then also the, the Kubernetes, the sailor, uh, must have some kind of psychological resilience. Because uh, in an individual's tendency, psychological resilience is an individual tendency to cope to with stress and adversity. It's not easy to be a Kubernetes for it. And this, co this coping may result in the individual marching back to previous states of normal functioning. Another form of resilience is sometimes referred to as post-traumatic growth or stealing effects, where in the experience adversity leads to better functioning, much like an inoculation gives you the capacity to cope well in the future with a disease. So, this was, as I was saying, what may happen if the captain, the leader of the Kubernetes, adopts a predefined direction uh, model, so that is the same in economy as, as trusting just a model, and without learning from the bathometer and the feedback, and without adjusting the direction, being fast to adjust the direction that is the feed forward of the boat. A good captain must have a clear destination in his mind. Of course, he must know where he want to go, otherwise it's no sense. Decide a direction and be able to use the bathometer prototype as a tool to check if that direction is possible. He must know where to throw the bathometer and be able to read the signals, the feedbacks, coming from it and use them to eventually change direction and choose a new, a new direction that is the field forward activity to achieve the destination of the boat, the goal, the mission. And this is where summarized by a phrase again from Otto Scharmer, learning from the experience of the past and learning from the future as it emerged. So, as I was telling, this is what business system laboratory, our business system laboratory was born and what we want to do. We want to be Business system laboratory is a prototype itself, is a bathometer itself that we created to be a bathometer, but we are ambition bathometers. We want to be a bathometer that can create other bathometers. I mean, our goal for the future uh, we, uh, that we will see if we will be able, just, we, are, we are just as association one year old. And so is, we are just in the very beginning. Our aim is to become a prototype that creates other bathometer for prototypes. So, 
through testing what comes from the academia, from the conference like this and other activity like this, to test this on real business and to get the feedbacks coming from that to improve the systemic approach. That's, that's our mission, that's inside our mission, if you read that, is to be a bridge in the academia. The labyrinth is inside the symbol of how difficult it is because you have to have a new mental scheme to get out of the labyrinth, as you know. So, that's, that's all. Thank you.